Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on this video. My name is Chris. I gotta be honest with you, right before I hit play on making this video here, I got a little giddy just because I saw Scream 5 has wrapped its filming. It's finished here. But not only that, Jack Quaid, one of the stars of Scream 5, went ahead and said, Goodbye, Five Cream. My, he said it. He's... <laughs> I have no idea if it's a huge coincidence, or maybe he actually does watch uh, the videos we make here. I hope not, because that means he saw my cringy intros. I'm going to go run away. But other than that, what we're going to be doing here is touching upon the latest movie news that's been happening in the past couple of days. We do got some interesting stuff here. We got talks about the new Transformer movie and who's going to be directing that, along with some trouble happening in the Batman universe, and even a little Amazon leak that gives us an idea of Venom 2. That is so much more. So many of you guys leave me your opinions down below on everything we discuss here today. What news got you excited? What didn't you care about? But also, don't be forgetting to hit that like button, especially if you're enjoying the movie news content that Side Flick brings into your life. All right, so the first story we're going to dive in here today just screams WTF. And this isn't just a regular WTF, guys. This is like the king of WTFs. Like, I can't wait to the day on side flick where another WTF story tops this WTF story because WTF. What we have right here is Deadline reporting that Spike Lee, a really great filmmaker, is making a Viagra movie. But not just that, he's making a Viagra musical. That right there was the sound of the cinema gods being extremely happy with 2020. I have no idea what to think of this news that came out here. Like, part of me thought this was a joke, some April Fool's type prank. Some of you younglings watching my channel kind of wondering, what's the big deal on this? Oh, I do not want to have to be the one to explain Viagra in your life, but, uh... If you must know, you know, Google it. Just don't do it on your parents' computer because you might get a spanking. Spike Lee, I think, is a very talented director currently working in the industry. He recently came out with a movie called Defy Bloods that I actually did enjoy. He also came out with the film Black Klansman that I thought was also very enjoyable. He so this is a man who has proven his worth and talent and the fact that he wants to take that worth and talent and make a Viagra musical, like, why not? Go ahead, let's see what you can throw our way here, but... As far as the story goes, man, I don't even know. Is this just a main character who takes a Viagra and then people start a singing like in real life? Or is this like some sort of origin story about how Viagra was made and they just throw in a musical because why the hell not? This is one I'm definitely going to have to keep my eyes on and I know the puns are just going to get us started. I can't wait to get into the comments section after you guys hear about this story. But from you guys who know what Viagra is and the everything involved with it, how do you feel about Spike Lee making a movie that is also a musical on this miracle product? From there, we got an update on what Paramount and Hasbro are wanting to do with the Transformers franchise. Now, like it or not, whether you like or hate the Transformers movies, they are money makers to the extreme, thanks to, I guess, the secret genius that is Michael Bay. However, in the most recent installments of the Transformer franchise, it feels like people are finally catching on that the Michael Bay produced Transformers movies aren't really that great and now they've started earning less and less money. We've heard that Paramount and Hasbro are planning to sort of relaunch slash reboot the franchise with three movies in particular that they're working on. Two more live action movies, one that is said to be in the Bumblebee universe, one that supposedly is a Beast Wars movie based on that popular show that a lot of you Transformers fans freak out every time I mention, and a CG animated Transformers movie. Well we have our director now for the Bumblebee universe universe Transformers movie that they're planning to make. Deadline here has it reported that Transformers Creed 2 director Stephen Capel Jr. tapped to direct next installment in Paramount and Hasbro franchise. Now yes, this is the guy who brought us Creed 2 and automatically I'm on board for this because when Creed 2 was coming out, I did not think it was going to be good. But man, did Creed 2 surprise me and I thought it was a really great sequel, nicely done. And from that film alone, it gives me the confidence that if you hand this guy a Transformer movie, he's probably going to do a good job with it. Now, one thing to note from this article here is that it mentions this will be one of the first Transformer films where Michael Bay has no say in it whatsoever. So, 
Yay. Along with that, like I also mentioned, this is said to be a movie set in the Bumblebee universe. Not too sure what that means. If that means it's Bumblebee 2 or maybe what I'm hoping for, it's an expansion of the beginning of Bumblebee where we have that war on Cybertron and what really happened there because come on, that's the movie we really want to see. How do you guys feel about this director stepping on to a Bumblebee universe Transformers movie? Talking about some news here on a franchise we haven't discussed in a while, The Batman. Now, The Batman, I believe, is still currently filming. It's been really hush hush quiet that's probably because they're all gone behind closed doors to finish filming robert pattinson matt reeves is the batman well one thing exciting about this batman universe and what warner brothers is wanting to do for the future is that they have a spin-off show set in the same universe that'll be coming to hbo max if you haven't heard about this this is a live action show that is going to be focusing on gotham police department and honestly everything seemed fantastic with this even though a lot of people were mentioning yeah didn't we already get the show gotham though however this looked to be a much more serious grounded approach set in the Matt Reeves universe with Matt Reeves himself attached to create the story. Not only that, people were excited when they heard the showrunner of this Batman show was Terrence Winter, a man who holds several Emmys and awards for his storytelling. Flash forward to yesterday where we find out there was a little bump in the road and the showrunner seemed to have some disagreements with Matt Reeves and Warner Brothers on where to take the show where he's parted ways. Now there's really two ways to think of this right now because one i am kind of excited to see how this hbo max show goes i'm just never a big fan of these spin-off shows that it's like oh you like the batman let me give you a show that doesn't have the batman but whatever matt reeves is attached it's a prequel it's still set in the batman universe maybe we'll get cameos here of other villains or batman popping up in the background since he was donning the mask at that time but seeing someone as talented and successful and really credited in their line of work as being a showrunner for a lot of these tv series that end up getting a lot of awards and the fact that he just could not agree with the vision of the show decided to go Nah, no thank you, I'm out. Kinda does scare me, but then again, if you look at the glass half full, Matt Reeves is sticking to his vision, he's believing that what he has is the right way to do it, and is the proper way, so much so that he was willing to part ways with somebody whose name attached to the project brought a lot of praise. So this does suck, but I'm gonna trust Matt Reeves. I mean, just looking at the footage and what he's done so far with the Batman, I think this man is on the right track to make a hit, and so his vision for the TV series better be good. How do you guys feel about the Batman TV series having this little bump in the road? Do you even care at all? And are you gonna watch this thing when it comes out? All right, getting to some news involving Venom 2 entitled Venom Let There Be Carnage, which is also one of the reasons I added Venom here to the lineup. Can't believe I just had him downstairs and didn't bring him up to the party. And you guys have heard me say I wasn't the biggest fan of the first Venom movie. Just wasn't a lot in there that I completely loved. I did end up liking it, but everything we've heard so far about Venom 2, I I'm still unbelievably hyped, especially to see Carnage on the big screen. We were all pretty devastated when they delayed the movie from October 2020 all the way to June 25th. 2021. Well, thanks to new leaks on Amazon here, we have an idea of some of the costume changes that we'll be seeing on Venom in this second movie. I gotta give some credit to this YouTube channel entitled The Playground Buzz because they were the first ones to bring it up here. Someone just sent me your video, dude, so good job for you. But what this YouTuber in particular noticed is that if you go to Amazon and you search up Venom costume, on Amazon, they have listed Venom 2 costumes. And okay, might not seem all that big of a deal, but these are officially licensed Party City Marvel costumes, and they are written for Venom 2, and the Carnage one, yeah, it's what we would expect Carnage to be, not that huge a surprise. In fact, even with this stuffy puffy mushroom, it's not even a super accurate version of what will be going down with Carnage, but... When we go to Venom suit, one thing in particular that we're noticing here is that he has the white spider on his chest. Kind of letting us know Venom 2 is finally going to give Venom his iconic white spider. That man is severely missing from that suit. Now look at this. I still want to say take it with a grain of salt. Maybe it's a mistake or whatever here. But if you go to Party City and look at their other Venom costumes, this isn't traditionally what they have Venom looking like. They have a comic accurate version of the Venom costume that you can tell is obviously pulled from the comics. And that is just titled Venom. But looking over here at the Venom 2 costume, that's clearly meant 
content for the live action version of Venom that they currently have going on in this Sony universe. Because he has those awkward white gray veins sticking out, this is clearly meant to be Tom Hardy's Venom right here. And it would make sense that these costumes appeared online in October because, well, Venom was originally supposed to come out in October of 2020. So, of course, the marketing and licensing team would have all these sort of products ready to give to the people around the Halloween season. So it's like, OK, you'll have this movie come out and then people can be Venom for Halloween. It's one of the latest trends that's been happening right now, just because since so many movies have been pushed back that they didn't plan ahead with their marketing and toys, which is why we've gotten so many leaks for other Marvel movies that we've gotten like Black Widow, Eternals, because by now we were supposed to have trailers, probably even the movie come out already, thus giving us merchandise to buy and celebrate these films. Still, I think it's pretty awesome here that they'll be giving Venom here his signature spider. Really curious to how they're going to play that off and pull it off because is Tom Holland actually going to be cameoing in Venom 2 and that's how he does it. The symbiote kind of bonds with Tom Holland and then it goes back to Eddie Brock, Tom Hardy. Or does the symbiote just randomly latch onto a spider and then back onto Tom Hardy and that's how they explain it. I don't know, your guess is as good as mine, but you guys hear me talk about this. Do you think these officially licensed Amazon Party City costumes that say Venom 2 are an indicator of the look that we're going to see on Venom come into his second movie? I just don't think that they'll keep him without that white spider for the entire Venom franchise. Come on now. We eventually got to get him looking like Venom. But that is just all the movie news we currently have going on right now, guys. I really want to know your opinions down below on everything we discussed here today, specifically also the Venom stuff or that Viagra movie going on like crazy. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, guys. Come on now. Subscribe if you haven't already. What you doing? As well as hitting that like button. Follow me on Twitter at 3C Film Review. As always, I'm Chris. Take care.